that's better. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. And uh, it's good to have you with us. Um, just a couple of things I wanted to say um, is just a reminder that our open days um, for private prayer have changed. It's now Tuesday, Wednesday and Saturday. Of course, normally the church would also be open on the Thursday morning for our uh, midweek communion. Uh, but uh, Rachel is on holiday, so there will be no communion this week. Um, Rachel will be back on the 11th of August, so there will be a midweek communion on Thursday at 9.45, um, not this week coming, but the week after. Um, so next week, um, on Sunday, uh, 8 o'clock, we'll be taken by uh, Richard uh, Arding again, and we're very grateful to him for that. And I will be uh, leading a service of morning worship. Um, I, given the, the connection problems, um, I'm not sure where I will be for that. Uh, it depends whether we can get them fixed or not. Um, but it will be a non-Eucharistic uh, morning worship next week at 10.30 on Zoom. So, welcome to you all. And um, we're just present, aware of God's presence with us, even in our technical hitches. And so we pray, the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lord, direct our thoughts. Teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. And when we meet in God's name, we are conscious of his presence with us. And we're conscious too of the ways that we have failed to live up to the way he has called us to live. We fail to be the people he has called us to be. And so let us turn to God and say to him, Heavenly Father, we know that there have been times when we have done things that you asked us not to do, and we have hurt you, ourselves, and others in our selfishness. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to do what is right. We have said things that were better left unsaid, and have shown ourselves unworthy of your name. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to do what is right. We have failed to keep our promises to you, for we have put ourselves before you and before our neighbour. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to do what is right. May God, who is both power and love, forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Well, if you uh, are so minded, then please stand for the peace. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. And let us, well, you may like to, to uh, switch to gallery view if you are able uh, and give everyone a wave to, as a sign of peace. So peace to you all. Not too close. Sad wave. Peace to you all. And uh, now as we come to our next hymn, I want to, um, or rather not next hymn, it's a, a reading. And um, I want to tell you about three miracles this morning. And the Price family are going to tell us about the first one from uh, Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. And uh, we've, got a, we've, we've got a special way of showing it to you. When Jesus heard what had happened to John, he left in a boat. He went alone to a place where no one lived. When the people heard that Jesus had gone, they left their towns and followed him by land. When Jesus got out of the boat, he saw a large crowd of people. He felt sorry for them, and he healed the ones who were sick. Late that afternoon, the disciples came to Jesus and said, No one lives in this place. It is already late. Send the people away where so they can go to the towns and buy food for themselves. Jesus said, The people don't need to go away. You can give them food to eat. Philip answered, They'd have to work a month to buy enough bread for each person here to have only a little piece. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said, Here is a boy with five loaves of barley bread and two little fish, but that is not enough for so many people. Jesus said, Bring the bread and the fish to me. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves of bread and the two fish. He looked into the sky and thanked God for the food. Then he broke the bread into pieces, which he gave to the disciples, and they gave the food to the people. Everyone ate until they were full. When they finished eating, the disciples filled 12 baskets with the pieces of food that were not eaten. There were about 5,000 men there, as well as women and and children who all ate and were satisfied. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you so much. That was great. That was brilliant. Well done, Don. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a very familiar story, isn't it? Um, and uh, there's been lots of discussion and talk about what it means and what happened there. And it's been suggested that the real miracle of that story is the generosity of the little boy. When the disciples were faced with such huge need of this sea of people, 5,000 men and, and possibly as many women and children, how could they possibly give all these people something to eat? But this little boy was prepared to give up. All he had, his five barley loaves and his two fishes, in order to give something to the people who needed. And people say, well, it's his generosity that inspired the generosity of the rest of the crowd. And they brought out whatever little bits and pieces of food that they had and shared it. Now, you might think, well, hang on a minute, to say that it's not a miracle of God is, is belittling God. And I have to say, that's what I felt for many years. But let's just think for a moment, because actually to transform people's hearts from being protective, oh, this is my food, to actually a generosity of spirit is a miracle. And it gets to the very heart of the message of the kingdom of heaven. And there are two things here. One, 
is we need to listen to children. Because such, that the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And children have a lot of wisdom and we do well to listen to them. And the second thing is that sharing sacrificially is at the heart of the kingdom of heaven. It's what we're called to do, to love our neighbour as ourselves, to give, to respond to need with compassion. Now, is that what happened? I don't know. But let's not lose hold of those core messages of the kingdom of heaven. But I want to share with you now a film. It was made nearly 50 years ago now. And I was shown this film uh, when I started reader training 25 years ago. And it, and it really um, struck a chord with me. And it's been with me all these years since. And I was delighted to be able to find it on YouTube. So Tina, if we, you could show us the film. The, the quality is bad because it was made 50 years ago, but I hope we'll be able to hear it. Thank you. As a member of a prayer community in Huarit that had been started by Father Rick Thomas, he all of a sudden read to us uh, a chapter from Luke, which he said, when you give a supper or a dinner, do not invite your friends or, or you, your relatives who can pay you back, but invite those that have nothing to give. And at that very moment, Father said, I, hadn't, I have never complied with this. And with that, I identified. I hadn't either. So we decided to come to the garbage dump for Christmas dinner and share with the people. Most in the group had never heard of the dump or been there. And, but we figured there'd be 125 people at the dump, and we prepared 125 burritos, some uh, oranges and some apples. Mm -hmm. Somebody brought two hams, and we had a few tamales. And we went out on Christmas morning to see what would happen. This is a group of Roman Catholics in El Paso? Some from El Paso, some from Juarez. There were two prayer groups. It was a very cold, drizzly Christmas morning. And we got up here at the dump. And there were people working at it. It just surprised me. Some right. of these people didn't doing what they're doing today. Doing what they're doing today, just working around here. Some of them didn't even know it was Christmas. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a shock. for as they scavenge through through this is this this is the way they this, earn their this is, this is the way they earn their living they uh, work with a whole like tool it's either it's got one or two prongs at the end of it uh -huh. and they'll sift through the garbage uh -huh. they'll separate the cans and the bottles they'll separate cardboard paper mm -hmm. they'll separate food and uh, they'll get it all in one pile and then they'll sell it to the co-op mm -hmm. And the co-op will get it all up and sell it all collectively to outside business. So, in fact, these people are earning their livelihood by picking this material out of the this, garbage. This, and is their, this is their work. This, this is their work and this is their livelihood. Six, this, seven days a week they work here. Well, we got out there and found that the dump was divided into two areas. Two labor unions had it divided and one group could not go in the other group's area and that group could not go in this area. So there's Father Thomas and Guillermina Villada going back and forth between the two unions, kind of uh, negotiating peace. While we were trying to negotiate between the two groups, Dr. Villalva told us not to get them together because there wasn't enough food. There was a lot more people than we had thought we had, but anyway, we neglected to follow his advice and got the two groups together and found it was about 350 people, and we brought food for 125. So. One labor union stood on one side of the tables, the other labor union stood on the other side of the tables, not having any contact with each other. We said a little prayer and said, now we don't have enough food for everybody, but we'll share with you what we got. Y 
allí. Entonces se eh, formaron las personas. And from there, the people formed the line. They passed through the line, and we were giving everybody what we had. And at the end, we had a lot of food left over because we had more than enough. They all ate, we ate, they took food home time after time and came back and got more food and took it back home. But what was happening? God was actually multiplying? With yes. In fact, one of the men here working at the store is Frank Alarcon. He was on the back of his pickup truck. At the, he was standing on the camper looking down at the tailgate. And they let the tailgate of my truck down and this lady starts cutting this ham. And she's cutting a ham and she's giving out pieces of ham. Good. Good pieces of ham, big pieces of ham. And I'm looking at the ham and I'm looking at the people and everybody's eating and everybody's having a great old time and they're still giving out food and I look down at the ham and there's a big old ham and this lady just cutting away. When it was all over, we had so much food left over with all the 350 people ate. There was eight car loads from the prayer communities ate and everybody had enough to eat. They took all the food home and we still had so much food that we had to go to three different orphanages to get rid of it on the way back home. Amazing. So in fact, the food was multiplied. The food God developed. performed a miracle right here on Christmas Day. When we served the food to all the, those poor people at the dump, I, I didn't realize what was going on at that moment. I just knew that we had fed all that people, but uh, it was days later when I realized what had happened and when we counted the food that each uh, person had taken to the dump, uh, that's when this, uh, uh, the idea of God's uh, will dawned on me uh, and uh, we realized that he wanted us to work there. We came to realize that these are our brothers and sisters living on garbage, eating garbage. The children had never had a bath in their life. There was no water there. Uh, when we first started coming here, almost all of them lived in cardboard shacks. Mm -hmm. uh, they'd make enough to maybe eat groceries, store-bought groceries, mm -hmm. for three days of the week. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the week, they literally eat garbage. Yeah, every day was the same. They had to work seven days a week to make five dollars you know every day all day seven days a week no holiday no sunday nothing they wouldn't know what going to church is so in order to tell them about jesus we had to go out and work in the garbage with them and i could see that this was a, a great grace of god in the hearts of these people who came from middle class homes and had air conditioning and they'd get out there with the millions of flies and the garbage and the stench and it, it, it smelled bad and the people were very dirty and uh, there were a lot of flies and it was not a very nice place to work actually uh, but uh, he, he he healed us so much that we later uh, working with them didn't even smell all the, 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 the trash. And then, uh, of course, many other things happened since then that have come through prayer and studying the Bible. And uh, I mean, there's so many wonderful things that we see God do every day, every day. And there's a big body of people that have been uh, reformed by God. And it's the Holy Spirit. Uh, at work. Wow, well, that gets me every time. Um, what an amazing story. I wonder what is the greatest miracle that God was able to feed so many people, um, so many more than the disciples, modern day disciples, had provided or whether it was the transformation in the hearts of the, as he put it, middle-class people with their air conditioning to go out and work alongside the poor on the dump. Um, a truly wonderful thing happened there. Um, and I wonder what it says to us today. Um, so that is the second miracle. And I want to tell you about a third miracle. 
And because when you feed somebody, the problem is that the next day they're hungry again. And that's exactly what happened after Jesus had fed the 5,000. The next day, the crowd ran after him. And when they found him, they wanted him to give them more food. And Jesus said, no, look, don't go running after food that perishes. You need the bread that comes from heaven, from God. And so they all said, oh, yes, give us that bread. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the one who will satisfy your spiritual hunger, which is a longing for God. And I wonder, just in the same way that, you know, we who have our cupboards full of food find it difficult to imagine what it must be like for someone to wake up in the morning and wonder whether or not they're going to eat that day. So it's difficult for us to imagine what it must be like for someone to wake up with that spiritual longing, that hunger for God in their hearts, but not actually knowing how to satisfy it, not knowing that it is Jesus who satisfies our spiritual longing. Well, what I want to do now, if we can make it work, is to divide up into breakout rooms and to just discuss among yourselves for a little while those three miracles. And I want to ask yourself, you to ask yourselves two questions. What does the miracle mean to you? Or how do you understand it? What do you think about it? And the other question is, so how is it relevant to us today? So how do you feel about the miracle and how is it relevant for us today? I'm going to give you nine minutes. That's three minutes per miracle. Right. I think there we go. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had fruitful discussions. Um, before we go on, is there anybody that would like to share anything um, that you talked about in your room um, that you think would be would be good for other people to hear? You'll need to unmute yourself if you wanted to speak. I, I'll tell you what I've just told about a little group, an experience I had in Naples. We were working with the um, servicemen centre in the heart of Naples. Mm. And we were being turfed out of the property where we were. And of course it was desperate. We had nowhere to go. And we found this place uh, down in Via Generale. And... Uh, but we needed to have quite a lot of money in order to provide the bond on the first uh, three months of um, rent. Mm -hmm. anyway, anyway, we had our final service at the original place and mm. we uh, naturally asked for money. Mm. And there were people in the back room who were ready to count the mm. offering that was being given. So the, the collection plates all went round yes. and they counted first offerings and it didn't come up it didn't meet everything right so we had another offering <laughs> and in, in, my, in my purse i had a 10 lira note right and i knew i'd got to go shopping on monday morning so yeah. I, had, I needed this 10 lira anyway uh, the lord said to me put it in the plate which i did yeah and uh, and we had exactly the right amount of money at the end of that count. Wow. But the miracle was the fact that on Monday morning, yeah. I still had 10 lira in my purse. Oh, and that, wow. that is fact. That is fact. Fabulous. So oh. how does that happen? But that it's... is wonderful. That is yeah. wonderful. Is there anybody else that wanted to share anything? I think one of the one of the key things for me out of all this is the observation that when people who have share with people who do not have everybody has enough with some left over and I think that's something that we can take into our daily lives um, and the way that we live so thank you everybody for taking part in this um, we'll now have a, a, uh, another hymn, and it's a reminder of Jesus as the bread of life, the bread of heaven, who 
satisfies our spiritual longing. Uh, and so let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we come to our prayers and the collect the special prayer for today. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair. That we may trust in you alone through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, for our prayers uh, today, we're going to do something a little different. And I'm going to uh, play um, some music and put some pictures up as prompts for our own prayers. So I encourage you just to look at the pictures. Some of the pictures are things that we might give thanks for. Some of the pictures are things we might cry out to God for. But actually the truth is that most of them are both at the same time. So as we come to the prompt, uh, to, to the um, pictures, then I just um, encourage you to pray. And if, and we didn't try it at the beginning because of the setup problems, but if you, there's a little chat function at the bottom. If you wanted to put um, things that you want to pray for in the chat, uh, then, uh, then you can do that and we can pray them all together. Thank you, Tina. Oh, Oh. 
So let us bring all our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. And you may want to unmute yourselves so we can say this together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day day bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And our final hymn is, To God be the glory, great things he has done, great things indeed. Reminded to stand, please do stand for our blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Strengthen us in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory in the name of Christ. In the name of Christ. 
Amen. Amen.